Hey, it's time for a Google Ads and SEO update. A lot has happened with GA4 and some woes for clients with Google Ads right now. Lots to cover, lots of great client questions. Let's hit it. Hello everyone and welcome to the Google Ads SEO update from Cal Abundant. Uh, we uh, are glad you could sit back and watch and currently right now we are going to go through a lot of updates from GA4 and beyond. So a lot have changed since GA4 came out. Uh, it was officially launched in July and now it is is happening for everybody. Um, one of the sort of uh, interesting topics was that GA4 rollout, 23% according to a survey. There's a lot of people now that definitely need to um, you know, go to GA4, which is pretty fascinating. Kind of looking at the overall of everything right now, um, Google Ads is causing some woes for clients. So Google Ads has definitely had its growing pains over the last few months. And as we talk about this, Google Ads is actually causing woes for various clients where they're actually seeing performance drops in some of their campaigns. This is in large part due to the updates with GA4. Um, the kind of cookie list going away from that, which they've been away from for a while, and into the GA4, which is a different methodology for actually tracking um, conversions, tracking everything. So it's a pretty kind of um, volatile time right now, and that's why we're actually suggesting that for a lot of clients, they switch to um, diversify their platforms. That includes Facebook, Instagram, social efforts, as well as blogging and SEO during this time, because we expect the volatility to be pretty intense. Um, that's, you know, to say something pretty intense for up until fall or winter. So we do ex expect uh, and, and hope that clients will kind of shift gears more toward maybe some SEO and some blogging to kind of help during this time. Uh, we've been watching this closely for a long time. We actually had this um, first announced in April of 2022 that our clients would be migrated to GA4. And then the coming storm that we said was in November of last year, in fact. So we did know that this would kind of be happening. We have been positioning some of our clients uh, uh, in different ways now. Updated our pricing and, and services on our website. So now we're offering different services to our clients, um, you know, providing still the amazing uh, value. Um, actually, compared to a lot of other marketing companies, this is actually a really good deal still. Um, we are still extremely competitive uh, in the marketplace. So it's something that we're constantly looking at and adjusting. And what we've done here is in some of our plans, like the elite plan and, and some others, we've actually adjusted them so that they have, um, AI content articles. So we've actually used AI to our advantage very strongly within SEO and to, um, uh, actually building out content for clients in a very smart way, which we'll go into later what Google is kind of doing now to, uh, circumvent that in some ways so we're constantly trying to be on top of it and trying to understand what's going on out there but just wanted to share that with with current clients as a note um, if you're a current client from the last um, last price you will not have any increase or any change um, if and then if you would have been notified if there was any uh, change in your plan or anything that way uh, so looking forward to the future for sure with everyone Let's dive into breaking news. Hey everybody, breaking news. Let's uh, talk a little bit about it. So what we've got here is a couple of interesting um, news tidbits for you from the SEO front and from the Google Ads front along with pro tip coming up. So from the SEO news, Google says AI articles based on top trending searches, not first person content. So this is an article from Search Engine Roundtable that basically says that um, if you create articles based on trending topics, so the latest kind of topics for things that are you know trending online, uh, kind of like Twitter-based and other stuff, or X as it's called now instead of Twitter. Um, that was uh, that was kind of a dumb name choice, I think. <laughs> uh, 
But anyways, um, basically what it's saying is that if you're using AI to generate these articles that might be just trending, it could backfire quickly, um, possibly. So they're kind of saying to make smart content that's relevant to your users if you're using AI that actually makes sense. Obviously, the, the EAT, the EAT guidelines is very important. Um, expertise, authoritativeness, trustworthiness is extremely important for businesses. And when you're creating content, if you're just creating content based on um, trending topics and stuff like that, that is not always the best thing because there are a lot of news organizations. There's one reported that's actually creating, I think, 3,000 articles a month, a larger organization um, that's kind of based around these trending topics and stuff. Not the smartest idea because Google is starting to see people are using that um, to kind of cheat so google doesn't like that so they're uh they're you know pulling back on that because they're seeing a lot of people that are just trying to get into the trending topics and uh they they again don't want that to happen so they're uh pulling back on that stuff another uh topic breaking news is that google merchant center policy says ai generated reviews are spam and disallowed so this is uh Again, search engine roundtable, and it basically is saying that if you're creating um, reviews that maybe you're sending to clients and you're using AI to generate like interesting text, that is a no no. And Google is going to flag those reviews as AI generated, not first person content. So do not do that. Do not just go into ChatGPT or something and say, write me a great review about my company that is a plumbing company and, you know, is in Columbus, Ohio. And it's SEO friendly and all this stuff. You can't do that. Um, it has to be a natural human generated review. You can suggest to people like, hey, could you mention these keywords in the review, but make it your own. That's ter perfectly fine. Um, if people are actually saying, you know, their own review, that's what you want. But that was interesting that Google is again pulling back because too many people are kind of abusing that or just saying, you know, send send this review just like send this you know say this whatever so be careful on that front as well um, for for how to use ai generated content bing chat is going through an upgrade now and right now it's taking longer than expected at 30 percent rollout so what's happening is there is an up upgrade to the bing chat interface um and and the infrastructure actually upgrade that's only 30% at this moment. Maybe it's increased as of now, um, but basically they were working on that and it's taking longer than expected. There are some issues with it and we kind of expect this as growing pains, as we noted, are occurring in these AI systems with BARD and with Bing. There was actually some pullback or pushback on um, pushback uh, with BARD because people were saying, BARD hasn't been updated in a while. Like, why not? What's the deal? And then Google was like, oh yeah, sorry. Like, yeah, no, we're, we're working on it. We're doing it. And then they did an update. So kind of interesting. Both these systems are, are being updated. Um, I think it is important, more important for the programmers to, you know, do more updates on that and not just rely on the AI to do its thing. Um, so kind of fascinating there how it's, how it's playing out. Another top breaking news story is that uh, GA4 readiness is at 23% fully adopted, 50% still learning, and 16% yet to begin. This was at the end of June. That's the last data we have. I expect this to be higher now, um, but it is interesting to note that um, GA4 uh, prior was, was very low at that point. So we're going to wait and see if there's any other updated information on this. Um, but we know that we have been already expanding everything to our current clients with GA4. It is extremely important. It is a big upgrade. It is a fundamental change in the architecture and, or the methodology in tracking things with Google. So that's why there's so much volatility going on and uh, is pretty, pretty interesting to see. Google is to drop support for sitemaps, ping endpoints in six months. Kind of interesting. Um, this was a back-end tool that a lot of well, we use, quite frankly, um, to use a sitemap and submit a sitemap. And in about six months, so roughly the end of 2023, they're going to stop supporting uh, ping sitemaps, so sitemaps to, through Google Search Console. This basically tells you how your business is um, indexed. So like what, 
what Google would see as an index of your page. It's kind of like the index of a book in the back of a book when you it lists all the uh, pages and, and where you can find things. That's kind of what it is to Google. Kind of interesting that they're switching gears and going away from this. I do think sitemap is very important. I I do think the ping function is very important, especially for smaller tier sites and beginning businesses that Google maybe pays less attention to. Um, but if you consistently update your content, you know, that would be helpful. Every so often there is something so important that it needs to be noted. This is one of those times. Today's pro tip is all about learning and understanding two-factor authentication. So recently my wife's uh, Facebook was hacked. It was a very serious hack and they actually hacked her email, which was an old AOL account. Um, uh, pretty funny, but that's what she used for Facebook and to no fault of her own, um, hackers uh, hacked that and unfortunately were able to gain access to her Facebook account. Now from this, I learned a lot about how Facebook deals with data, about how Facebook does not essentially care that much about personal accounts. Um, although they will help with business accounts, they don't do anything on the other side, and how that data relates to trying to fix an account that might be hacked. There has been an increase in hacks on Facebook, so it is something that cybersecurity is very important. I've actually talked with AJ Orr in the past, cybersecurity expert. Check out maybe some of those videos to um, be prepared in the future. So today what I want to go over is the uh, hacking and how to better prepare yourself. So this is today's pro tip. Again, Facebook has seen a big increase in hacked accounts. Um, be sure to use 2FA or two-factor authentication by clicking on your profile, going to settings, and seeing the account center. And I actually want to show that to you because it's so very important. Let's actually dive in now really quickly on that. All right, so for today's pro tip, what you want to do is go into your Facebook account, log in, and then use this on desktop. I recommend doing this on desktop. Click on your account, go to settings, and then go to see more in account center. And then from here, you're going to want to click down to password and security, click on two factor authentication, pick your specific profile. So you'll do this for each one. You'll enter in your password. You'll then be presented with some options for backup. And I would recommend authentication app. Um, you can also do some additional methods, but I really strongly recommend the authentication app text message is not the safest either because people could take your phone there could be issues there so um, security keys is another way that you can you can basically keep these keys as an option um, i recommend doing the authentication app and that is actually uh, the one you can get is from microsoft it is the microsoft authenticator and it's a free app that you can basically go into and then you'll be able to uh, download it either ios or android and it's a really helpful app that um, will give you updated keys every 30 seconds. And you simply open the app when you want to log in, and then you just type in the key, and that authenticates your account. So it's a really great high security option um, for logging into your accounts. And then when you do that, you basically add in the app, and how it does it is it um, you name it, and then you just take a picture of the code on screen. So pretty simple, very helpful, highly, highly recommended because again, hacks are on the rise for Facebook accounts. So I do recommend using two-factor please to secure your accounts and not let a bad hack um, happen to you. Thank you. Now back to some breaking news from the digital ad and Google ad news side. Google Ads is making some big news. They're doing some big, big changes right now. Um, the first is about generative AI. Generative AI is a massive step in what Google is doing to the future with search, and it involves AI search, where you can actually ask questions to Google, and it will present very detailed answers, along with what they've been testing out thus far is links. So they've actually been adding links into the mix, which is very positive. Um, this is really exciting for the future of digital ads, I feel, um, because not only might you have you know, some of these options here, but there could potentially be some ad 
um, options as well, particularly for the local side. I think it's very positive. If you're a local business, you could have ads that are also verified that then could show, which we'll go into more detail on some other headlines that were quite interesting. So this is a really positive step. Also showing these links is very important. Um, that was an issue with ChatGPT in the past where it had problems with links that some hallucinations, as they call them, occur where there might not be accurate links. So this is extremely important and interesting for the future. And I think it's a massive deal, a huge shift that's going to happen come Q4 of uh, 2023 for, for Google. And uh, once they fully roll this out, it's going to be massive for search and how users use Google. So very exciting there. From big news to interesting topics here, Google actually reported a bug showing too many ads. This was quite fascinating. Google was reporting that too many ads were being shown. Many people were actually saying to search liaison um, uh, expert, uh, ads liaison basically, on uh, X as they call it, um, that too many ads were being shown. Normally it's four or less, maximum of four really. I mean, usually it's like three or sometimes less. This was showing as many as five, so just way too many ads in the mix. Um, it is a problem, it is a bug. I would say it's a bug, but also there's a lot of people that suspect maybe it wasn't. Google knew exactly what they were doing. They have some interesting thoughts on that. Um, I think that Google probably knew what they were doing. <laughs> I don't know why they were doing this, but it, it said it was a bug, so let's go with that and hopefully it just was and they'll they'll be fixing that issue soon let me know what you think in the comments below was it a bug or was it intentional next topic is google ads is under new issues with trademark policy it now requires an actual appeal form when you submit many people are upset by this the trademark issue has been an ongoing problem for many advertisers where there might be trademarks and ads such as saying coca-cola or other company names that can be an issue with with the ads themselves so what you used to have to do was just basically uh, submit an appeal that's kind of it and then Google would review it and hopefully approve it or deny it in this case you actually have to submit an appeal form now in this case there has been uh, Melissa Mackey from Twitter or X did say this is horrible and it doesn't even work I've done appeals for a client after removing a supposed trademark from our ads. They still disapproved even after the supposedly reviewed them. It's super annoying. So pretty interesting there. There are some problems obviously with the trademark side. They're trying to make it easier, but it appears like advertisers just have to do more work at this point. So something of note there. This next one is pretty exciting for local businesses. Uh, Google tests new local search ad format. This format is basically a sponsored posts that you can run ads and actually show um, such as attorneys or plumbers or any business in your area that's pretty exciting um, you do have to be uh, verified so your address will have to be verified which we can actually help with if you have any issues there um, with the Google ad side and then Google will be able to actually show your location um, I'm still getting verification if, or information if this is on Pmax ads specifically, but it is quite interesting that Google is starting to show more information on um, local search as an ad format. Um, very important to have local searches because if you're trying to find people in your area, it is really important to, again, have more opportunities to show locally. And I do think that Google shines at that in that way. They have hyper-local search um, that's very uh, relevant versus like Facebook, which doesn't have as specific a um, area. It's normally like 10 miles, whereas um, Google, you can actually be more specific, which is great. Um, it's also a little more accurate in terms of actually showing ads to people in various locations based on it, it knows a lot of detail about where you search and kind of where you are that way to show you relevant ads, which actually do help. So that is actually really positive to see and quite interesting to actually show um, local search results uh, in the area so happy to see that and want to learn more and we will again follow this closely because we do want to know more information about this very important topic for local search ads well google has another program that they're getting rid of uh, this happens a lot they they to their credit they do try a lot of things which is positive but then they also get rid of a lot uh, so here's something new that google is getting rid of um, this is the buy on google program 
You might know this from shopping campaigns where you actually would buy, have the option to buy on Google. Um, certain Google merchant centers and e-commerce accounts would actually have the option to buy things on Google. We've actually done this with different clients and the result has been, let's not do this anymore. Uh, <laughs> so kind of funny um, because other, other people have noted that as well. They quickly bailed on this also where like Amazon, Google dictating that encourages buyer fraud, it's saying, and that's why Google marketplaces have very high concentration of various sellers. Um, and then it kind of gets into the details. I won't share any more there, but, but, for, but for some of this, what's fascinating is that it's talking about buy on Google in the US will be ending September 26, 2023. So something of note there, it will not be active anymore. Um, most all of our clients, we've actually paused or stopped that program very quickly because we also saw it was not worthwhile. Um, so fascinating things there. Uh, makes sense that they're getting rid of it, but something to note that we wanted to, uh, to share. For the latest news, tips, and good stuff, check out our website, cowabundant.com, and our blog. And then leave comments below if any of these news articles are interesting to you. Thanks. So let's switch gears for a moment. So what, every month we celebrate a charity of the month and, and it involves a connection to Ohio or our local area. Um, this month what we're sharing is uh, Special Olympics Ohio. And this is a great cause. Um, we actually, I, I have family members that uh, are part of this and very exciting. It's a wonderful day that is absolutely fantastic. Um, the, my cousin, actually, the, the father of, of, of one of the kids that uh, is involved, said it is the best place of humanity all at once. Um, again, that is just such a wonderful, wonderful thing to hear. So we're very happy to support this cause, and we hope that you will join us in um, donating to Special Olympics Ohio. There's a link on our website and our newsletter check that uh, might even be below in the uh, YouTube and uh, please donate anything you can every every month we try to uh, donate we donate to a charity so please join us and thank you for your support let's dive into some client questions we have some of the top client questions now that we want to check out so many questions we'll try to get into a few of them there's more on our newsletter but great questions as usual and uh, we want to make sure to try and uh, get a few. So let's dive in and see what we can do. First question is, is it really special when marketing companies uh, mention or say that they run ads on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo, DuckDuckGo? Do those platforms matter? So this is an interesting question. Um, in some ways, it doesn't matter. And here's why. So here's some data from uh, Oberlo. <laughs> statistics and we can kind of see the search market share is 93.12 percent that is massive quite crazy massive uh search market share for google wow um yeah so i guess uh you know kudos to you uh for that that is utterly massive but it also means that those other platforms might not matter as much now I will say those statistics can change, so it is, you know, th they're always changing, and I do think that those have actually changed now that Bing has Bing Chat, and there have been some interest there. Um, so I, I, I would say Bing maybe has a little bit more than that. Um, you also want to really look at your own campaign insights, your uh, uh, data analytics, your Google analytics to see where people are coming from, and you might want to just diversify as well. As we noted, we do recommend Ha doing other platforms um, from uh, you know YouTube, social, SEO, and all that, but for the most part, yeah, it's Google <laughs> for sure. For sure, it's still still Google. Question number two: My current marketing company has access to my domains, landing page ads, and Google Analytics. Can you get access to them from for me? Well. Uh, it depends. The problem here is you've given the keys to your kingdom for the sake of convenience. But now that things went south, you need access and you can't. This is a common story. Lots of businesses do this. We can always ask the, them 
if they will provide us that information, but often they simply won't give it or as pure contract, they might actually own like the landing page or even the ads sometimes. All of our clients don't, uh, all of our clients own all of, all of that information so that you own the landing pages, you own the website, you own the domains, you own, you are the admins of Google accounts for stuff that we manage. We are managers and we manage that for you. So if you do go to another uh, court organization, you have access. Now, as long as you keep the access and you have, you know, your password saved, that's another, that's another important thing. We recommend Bitwarden as a password recovery tool, for example. Um, there are others uh, as well, but uh, we certainly recommend a password tool to save that or, uh, yeah, so that's a big thing. But in either case, we can often try our best to get access. And if that doesn't work, then we will create new properties for you, new Google Analytics, new ad accounts, new whatever. We can do that. So that's sort of the answer. Of it depends. The next question is my current marketing company lists my CTR click through ratio at 0.05%. That seems low. Is that good or not? Well, it seems low and it is. Um, the Google standards say 0.1% and that actually in our eyes is actually very low. It should be 0.0 or 0.5 to 0.8% is what we recommend our clients. And even better, we want them to be at 1% to 2%. Um, anything higher, it's kind of like questionable, <laughs> you know, for ads, like if they're crazy high. That's a that, but that's where we'd like to see those. So yes, that is in fact very low. We recommend contacting us or figuring out your targeting, as there might be some problems with your targeting there. All right. Next question is: Should I create my own YouTube channel for business? Absolutely. Um, we recommend creating your own YouTube channel for your business. Um, that is really important and something that is very important to just control your brand. So your brand identity is kind of essential. Hey and if you're if you're doing that, it's it's very important to have your own brand account. We have our own brand account at Cow Abundant, so do check that out. Um, you know, that's that's where we have all our videos and all our good stuff. So it is really important to have your own brand account. Now, if you're like a podcast, you have a different from your website, maybe, we would recommend to have your own actual brand of the podcast have its own properties as well because then you control the brand you control the messaging you control you know views comments other things that way within the brand itself so there's some separation there which is positive too um in some ways so yes we do recommend that next question is do you use chat gpt for seo or marketing so this is a popular thing where it's basically asking about ai and what do we use for ai Yes, we use ChatGPT. We use Lab Access. We have we have Lab Access to advanced tools, which we like to use. Um, very important. And so those tools would be like, uh, you know, Bard. We have advanced uh, experimental access to Bard and other tools um, as well. We use photos, uh, generative photos, uh, applications, uh, text to video even. And we have tried that uh, little. Little tip, it's not that great, uh, but we like to try everything and see what works. We use a lot for generating content. We also check on the content to make sure that it's proper. We have lots of plugins we use and things like that to make sure that it's good content. Um, always very important. And as we are a top Columbus SEO company, we like to use AI um, when needed for SEO in a smart way. And we also keep up with trends to make sure that everything is as it should be. Um, and that we're not going to be penalized and our clients won't be penalized in such a way. And if we see that on the horizon, then we will make adjustments um, because it is an ever-changing field. And there's some certainly some interesting stuff coming in the next few months that you definitely want to stay tuned for because, wow, it is really awesome. And it will be a massive, massive shift, which is really exciting what's coming in the future um, for Google Ads and how they've... Uh, how they're going to, to shift things is fascinating. So we'll, we'll talk about that more in the future as well. Um, AI is a growing field. We were recently par part of the SMX Marketing Conference, which was um, a conference that occurred uh, every year from industry insights, from VPs, from Google. This was the Search Engine Land uh, uh, podcast. Um, I'm sorry, uh, marketing platform that we use. Uh, it was a conference that occurred that was fantastic and uh, we learned so much from it. Um, 
create hearing information direct from the source from these companies about what they want to do, where they want to go, and also the, you know, if there's any backlash or what SEOs thought was was pretty interesting too. Um, so yeah, we keep updated on all that stuff with AI, and uh, we're constantly learning new and exciting stuff and and using it and putting it to practice for our clients, which is great. Uh, the next question is, how often should I send emails to my mailing list? This is a great question. Um, the short of it is that you want to base your frequency based on your um, user engagement and your open rates. So if your open rates are decreasing, send less or improve your um, messaging. And then if they're, if they're very positive, you can send more, right? If you have 30 plus percent, 40, 50 percent open rates, that's fantastic. Um, we recently have been able to get, I believe, 50 percent. Now, that doesn't always happen, but we basically trim our list to make sure it's really the, the people who care about the message. And that's, that's really important. And then those people click the links and want to watch all this cool stuff and this content. So thank you. Like this video because it really helps us. Thank you so much. Please, please like, subscribe. It does help us a lot. We appreciate it. Um, so make sure that the content is tailored to you and that your open rates are kind of judged that way. If you're, uh, we usually say like two times per month is okay to try. Weekly might be too much, uh, but you might have to adjust your messaging to, to make it work. So just be aware of that. Next question is, how can I promote my videos? Um, so you want to treat videos as a holistic whole, the whole of your part of the whole of your marketing. So this means that the video is just one part. From there, you want to post on social platforms. You want to blog about it. You want to have it in other pieces and also be aware of content should be different for different platforms. So TikTok content is different than LinkedIn platform. Totally different audience. We have a meme about that below as well. Um, but totally different audience and you want to um, tailor each, you know, accordingly. So for shorts or reels, you want them to be shorter. Um, that's the tip of the iceberg. Think of the content. Think about, you know, if there's a deep dive, then you would do YouTube and maybe more detail about a longer topic. Um, that you can really go into shorts or under 60 seconds. They want to be short. Um, so the core of what your message is general promotion to answer that is part of Google ads. We promote things on YouTube, YouTube TV, Pluto, Roku TV, other platforms We've done some with Hulu, uh, OTP type stuff, streaming platforms, but generally we stick with the digital uh, landscape. So that is how that works and we're happy to talk to you about uh, promotion opportunities and stuff like that if you're interested um the next question is when you talk about youtube short shorts what is the length what is the length and what is that like so youtube shorts are a very very popular platform and we can actually see like shorts here um you know you would basically see the the actual short and it's a short video and it would it can be actually longer than 60 seconds on youtube but generally like shorts are uh 60 seconds or less and uh yeah you you a good short might be um you know even less like 15 seconds or something so uh yeah shorts are very popular very concise you know part of video and that's uh you can actually advertise uh shorts too so pretty interesting stuff do check out our memes. Every month we have some fun memes that we go over uh, relating to marketing, relating to SEO, Google Ads, everything. Uh, and we have a couple this month that are great. Check out the Thermostat Podcast with Jason. New episodes weekly. So do uh, subscribe to that and uh, check that out. We're also hiring. So go to our website um, to apply. Uh, certain positions are available. Uh, we're looking for video editors, SEO reps, all that good stuff. So please apply if you've got some skill and you're in Ohio or Columbus locally. We'd love to talk to you. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. I hope that was helpful, insightful, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, leave it below. We might include it in a future video or just answer it there. We love having the discussion. So please leave a comment, like the video. That really helps us subscribe and we appreciate you. And uh, yeah, keep, uh, keep on marketing. Thanks.